I decided to become a foster parent when I was 37. I was ready to start a family of my own. My mother had passed a few years back, and I fittingly decided on Mother's Day that I wanted that holiday to mean more to me than just missing my mother. I was done with dating and trying to find the right guy. It just seemed like my life was not going to work out the way I had originally envisioned it. I grew up in inner city Chicago. I was exposed to more crime by the time I turned 14 than some had experienced in a lifetime. Our cars and home were constantly burglarized and vandalized, and I experienced a sexual assault when I was 11. Throughout my childhood, I battled with depression and what I would later find out was post-traumatic stress disorder. As an adult, I gravitated to social work. I lived my life trying to create safety and security for youth like myself who had to learn to live in chaos. And every day working with these children, I just wanted to take them home and give them the love they deserved. And so fostering made the most sense to me. Patty was a beautiful 11-year-old girl. She had long brown curly hair and big doe-like eyes that could melt anyone's heart. She was smart, playful, kind, precocious and thoughtful. It's no mystery why when my agency asked me if I was interested in potential permanency with Patty, because that was a possibility, that I said yes, without hesitation. I wanted to be a mother. But like me as a child, Patty was traumatized. She came from an abusive home and experienced many moves. I connected with her longing for safety and I wanted to give her a loving and safe home. Now I apologize to all the parents out there for the naivety of what I'm about to say but I never realized how hard parenting would be. I mean, it seemed like we were constantly fighting. She would yell at me and I would yell at her for yelling at me. One night, after we argue yet again about her going to bed on time, she begins to pack all of her things. She yells at me to call the caseworker to pick her up. She yells at me, you don't want me. No one wants me. I kneel down on her bedroom floor where she's busily packing all of her bags and I sweep my arms around her. And I rock her and I whisper, I do want you. I love you. I do want you. I love you. I do want you. I love you. <sighs> and something comes over me and I wonder, Am I comforting her or am I comforting me? When she finally calms down, she throws her arms around my neck and squeezes so tight. She lays back on her bed and says, I love you, mommy. I finally got what I wanted. I got to be her mother. I was able to reach a part of me that I thought had been closed off for a long time. She was my 11-year-old self, and I was loving myself back to life through her. But then, after seven months together, her birth family did what they were supposed to do for reunification. She left me about a month later, after a total of eight months together. And I never saw her again after that last moment of kissing her on the forehead when I dropped her off at school. I loved her more than I thought possible to love another person. Through my love for Patty, I was able to realize the pain of my repressed traumas. Because of her, because of her, I was able to begin to heal myself and my past. So while she didn't become my daughter for life, she gave me this gift. The irony is that I spent most of my life trying to help others and fix other people's pain that I never realized I never fully healed from my own. Hi, I'm Christina. 
If you like this story, thank you for listening to my story. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina. Thank you for listening to my story. If you like this story, please be sure to subscribe.